All right, so the title of my speech today is Don't Knock It Till You Try It At Least Once. Because it's important for us to keep our beliefs in check. If we don't, we might believe something that shapes our entire existence and then never find out that we were wrong. So let me give you an example of how a belief I had turned out to be, at least for me, untrue. You see, when I was a little girl, I used to go flying on special weekends with my dad. When I was nine years old, he had a four-seater Cessna where he would put me in the co-pilot seat and then he would start the engine and the propeller would go and stop and stop and, it, and this big gust of summer wind would hit me in the chest chest and I get a big grin on my face and then the carriage of the plane would rattle and shake and rattle and shake as we were going faster and faster down the runway and it would shake and shake until all of a sudden the wing would catch the wind and we would soar toward the blue sky with the white puffy clouds and then we would land at this great place to eat breakfast which was an old farmhouse that you could land right next to it and then taxi practically up to the front porch. And you see, it was memories like these that I had in mind that shaped my understanding of flight when I was offered an opportunity to go skydiving at the age of 34. Because I had heard that skydiving is like flying except without an airplane. Well, my friends and I showed up at the airport and so far so good, everything looked familiar. There was an airport hangar there and people, people milling about. The sights and sounds were very familiar to me, so I wasn't nervous. And then when we had our 45 minute orientation, I still wasn't nervous, even though they connected me up with a tandem instructor who was only as tall as me, a tiny little woman. And then they put us into this airplane, this small cargo plane that where the back hatch opens up. And even though I'd never been in that kind of plane before, I still wasn't nervous. Even though we were flying up to the altitude of 14,000 feet, everything so far looked like flying to me. But then they opened the back hatch at 14,000 feet and the clouds that I had just been looking up at not 20 minutes ago, I was now looking down at these great mists in the air. And then the formation flyers, they stood up and they were wearing these black and white impressive flight suits with dangling things from their arms and parachutes on their back and they stood up and lined up side by side and then each one fell out the back of the plane and they were in a millisecond this big on the top of those clouds a millisecond suddenly my perspective was starting to alter this was unfamiliar territory in fact, I was starting to get a little nervous. No, I wasn't getting nervous. I was scared half out of my wits. Ah, but that didn't affect the tandem instructor connected to my back. Oh no, she just moved my legs forward one after the other toward the back of the plane one by one, hitting the ground until the last step didn't hit the ground. It hit the sky and I flipped into a somersault and then the 45 minute orientation came to mind and said if you don't go into formation you will spin out of control and immediately my hands flew up and my legs flew up and we we were dropping we were dropping 200 feet per second, we were dropping 20 stories per second. And then I, st I couldn't breathe. I, I couldn't catch my breath. And the wind was blowing in my ears and I couldn't hear, it was so loud. And I, I, and then 
I noticed how beautiful it was out there. The the, the, the compact shape of the earth and, and the and the clouds we were dropping through. And I could see the ocean way off in the distance. It was beautiful. So I pushed my fear aside. I pushed it just so I could see for a brief moment the beauty of it. And then I felt this tap, tap, tap on my altimeter. And I looked over at my t altimeter and we were in the red zone. And I remembered again my 45 minute orientation and I reached back and I pulled the ripcord. And this amazing blue fabric unfurled overhead. And my instructor grabbed the steering mechanisms and it was peaceful and quiet. The wind was no longer rushing through my air, my ears, it was just gently floating. And I saw this Home Depot over there to the right and people were waving at us from their golf, from their carts. And then I looked over at the flight, at the drop zone and the wind was going too fast. There's no way we're gonna make it that far. And then I hear her from the side, the wind is too strong. We're not going to make the drop zone. We're going to have to land in that field over there by the Home Depot. So she says, now when you get close to the ground, pull your knees up and let the ground come to your feet. OK. And so we come down and we get down to closer to the field. And as we lower to the field, the grass goes up to our faces and I put my feet down on the ground and stand up. Now run with the wind or we'll get dragged to the ground. So we ran with the wind and she unhooked me. Here's the point I want to make. Don't believe everything you hear. Skydiving is not like flying. Skydiving is like dropping out of the sky and then living to tell about it. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you.